This is my review of the GWOS HGS Plus 4K or HATIS Plus 4K. This is a new 400Hz polling rate based mouse. That means it updates faster on the screen, faster click response. It's been feeling really snappy. It uses zippy switches, which are estimated to have about 60 million clicks in them. They feel pretty good. I'm used to Japan Omron switches. Those are quite light. I'm a fan of both of these. I've been using this mouse for about a month. It's quite light, around 49 grams or so. You get a lot of your mouse. You get two cables, short one for 4K polling and a long one for charging. You also get some tools for turning the mouse on and off, some grips, you get a lot of skates. You also get a pair of glass skates if you were to pre-order. They have a really cool graphic on them if you can see here. If you want to try glass I'd go for them, but I just recommend staying with PTFE. Glass is known to slow down over time. I recommend you use the center skate because I was using it for a bit without that and putting the center skate on helps it glide a lot more on your pad. The g dongle for 4K is just a puck with a female micro B connector. This could be a pain to replace down the line if you're someone that's known to lose things. One of my dislikes of the mouse is that the cable is quite tight. When you're trying to unplug it, it's really hard and I'm worried about damaging the mouse. There's even been a couple of times where I've been trying to unplug the charging cable. I've had to use so much force that my hands have sprung back and the micro B cable has scratched the plastic over my mouse a little bit. I'm not a massive fan of how tight the cable is. One thing that some people might not like is you can't turn the mouse on and off with your hand. You have to use a little tool that's included and then flick the mouse on. I just turn it off when I'm not on the computer anymore, but there is a sleep feature, so if you want to use that, you can. I've not tested it though. There's also a sticker that you can put on the bottom of the mouse if you want to keep dust out of it. There's also little indicators on the sticker, so you know which is on and which is off, which is really handy. By default, the mouse has four different DPI options. 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. When you change DPI, there's different colors on the bottom of the mouse to let you know what DPI setting you're on. You just have to remember what the colors are. You can also see the different colour options in the software. With the mouse you get some female micro B to USB-C male. Um, I'm not sure what these are for but I guess they could be useful for something. You pick up in grey which I've got it in. You can also get it in pink with white buttons. You can also get it in all white. If you scroll down the website you can also find a download link for the software and firmware. So it's quite easy to update your firmware if you need to. They've had maybe one or two firmware updates I believe since I bought the mouse. So they're obviously improving things as they go. So if you download the software and it gives you a zip file and then extract the two folders. If you go into the firmware folder, there's clear instructions that tell you how to update your firmware, so it's really straightforward. You don't have to install anything to use the software of the mouse, you just open the .exe file. You should see something like this. Unless you change what the buttons do, you can see the current DPI level. You can add more DPI levels if you want to, up to 7. You can also change the polling rate of your mouse from 4000 to 125, just anything in between by sliding this little slider. You can change the debounce time, I've got mine on 0. You change the lift off distance, mine is set to high right now, let me set that to low again. There's also an angle snapping feature if you want to use that. The older versions of the software I noticed didn't have this motion sync option, so I guess it was enabled by default. There's also a little battery indicator, maybe a percentage indicator would be better, maybe they can change that in the future. The software gives you a lot of control over your mouse. So if you want my honest opinion on the GWOS HTS Plus, it's honestly another solidly built mouse. I'm giving this a solid recommendation. If you want something that's super light and has 4K polling, go for this GWOS mouse. Honestly, it's really good. There's a little bit of creak sometimes if you squeeze it. There's like minimal to no pre-travel. The only thing I'm not a massive fan of is how tight the cable can be. Because I've scratched my mouse up a bit because trying to pull the cable out and then my hand springing back and scratch the mouse with a little... It's a little bit strange that you have to use a tool to actually turn the mouse on and off. They do include the tool of course. A little bit strange. If you want a solid 4K light mouse, then you can go for this. It's a really solid mouse by GWOS, and I like it a lot. The only thing I've noticed is if you try using the 4K polling and your processor's being hit really heavily, like I tried on two different computers that were hitting 100% processor usage, and sometimes this would stick and jump around a bit. It's only if you're like running on kind of a low-end system, and you're really hitting your processor really hard, but other than that, it's been really stable, the 4K. Now, we'll show you like the mouse beside some other mice that I have, some popular ones and stuff. Here it is beside the Logitech G305, a popular wireless mouse. Here it is next to the Logitech G502, a mouse that I used for a long time. It's quite bulky. Here it is next to the Logitech G903. I used this one for a couple of years and loved it. Another bulky mouse. Here it is next to the G Pro X shape by Loose Out. This is the exact same shape, but about 38 grams.
Here it is next to the 10% super light by PMM mods. Another really interesting mouse that I like a lot. Do check them out. Next to PMM mods UL2 slash Starlight S shape. Next to the final mouse Starlight Pro 10s in medium. This is a really popular mouse. I prefer the smaller shape. Here it is next to the final mouse Starlight 12 Leiden in small. Here it is next to the Razer Viper Ultimate. Here it is next to the Ninjutsu Katana Super Light Wireless. Here it is next to the Exertify MZ1. Here it is next to the Zonkunug M2K. I really like this mouse and it's super light. Here it is next to the PMM mods PCBR AK. This uses Zonkunug M2K internals in a similar weight. Next to the crafted mice, Symira 104 with Logitech G Pro X internals. I also like this mouse a lot. You totally check out crafted mice, they make some really nice mice. If you consider subscribing and giving this video a like, it will help me so much. Thanks a lot for watching.